Is this photo evidence that Lehigh Defense has finally developed a 12 gauge version of their extreme penetrator bullet? Hi everyone, this is Jeff of Tal Flare Mouse and as far as I know Lehigh Defense is not developing a 12 gauge extreme penetrator slug. But Alexei Lavrov of St. Petersburg, Russia wanted to see if the concept was even doable. Alexei has come up with a lot of interesting prototypes for us over the years and I invite you to check out his channel. We were sent nine of these to test out. Each one was an absolute work of art. Really nice machine work. The one I'm showing here is one we recovered after testing. Gives you a, an idea how tough these things are. Now these are solid brass weighing in at 546 grains each and they utilize a discarding Sabo. These are just under four times the mass of the 10 millimeter extreme penetrators. We'll be using a full rifle barrel for these tests and we'll be matching the velocity of the 10 millimeter version. 1500 feet per second. Hey everyone, welcome back to Later, folks. Jeff and Officer Greg out here with you on a hot Central California day. It is not yet pumpkin spice weather. Jeff and I are out here just drinking and smoking straight west coasting and we stumbled across a really cool submission that Alexei in Russia, everyone remembers Alexei Lavrov from Russia, he's submitted uh, probably more rounds to this channel than just about anybody else. Well, Alexei has designed a, or actually I should say Alexei has replicated a round that probably most of you are familiar with. This is a Lehigh Defense, um, what we call this an extreme penetrator round that in 40 caliber sold by Underwood Ammo. Alexi has made us a 12 gauge version of that thing out of solid brass. Look at that monster. Four flutes. It's, it is solid. There's no hollow cavity in the back or anything. Oh, that thing's solid. You can feel the weight of it. He made four flutes. He's got the little gas checks on it. It's, this is a, an impressive piece of brass, folks. We're going to take a look and see if it performs the same way as these little penetrators. The reason that an extreme penetrator or an extreme defender works so well, the extreme defender of course is designed to replace a hollow point. These little channels in here actually shove soft material, like your own goo, out of the way like a snow plow. And they make very similar, sometimes more impressive damage in soft targets than even a hollow point and they don't need to expand of course. That's why they are so popular. So we're going to check and see. We've got a lot of targets out here with you today. We brought some big, massive, heavy-duty targets to see just how much damage, how much penetration we can get out of these big old monsters here. And uh, we're going to test them out for Alexi. These things are, like I say, they're kind of a replication of the Lehigh Defense Extreme Penetrators, but Alexi is not making these things for commercial sale, so he's not violating any kind of... Uh, any copyrights or anything like that? Yeah, he's just learning uh, CNC machining, and he thought it'd be a great project. You know, do, kill two birds with one stone, re recreate something, and submit it into the channel. Yeah, but I mean, nice, sharp edges, great machining. Beautiful. So we're, we're going to try to recover as many as we can. I don't want to lose any of these. These yeah. are like fantastic. One of the things we recently picked up on eBay was a, a nice little rifled barrel for my old 870. So we're going to send them through a rifled barrel. They're a saboed round, so they're shrouded in plastic. Uh, we just test sighted this thing in. It's pretty dead on accurate right out of the box. Um, we're going to send them through a fully rifled barrel and see how they perform. Doug's waiting on us downrange. He's been hot. He's been texting me saying hurry up and get on with this. Um, he's got a couple of vests on, so we're going to... Yeah, there he is. But Doug's wearing double vestiges today, so we're, we're going to send these rounds and see if he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't mind catching one of these for us. All right. Let's get to it, the penetrator. Ooh. How far is that? Maybe 15 yards? About 15 yards. Go, oh, Doug. Oh, boy. 14.92. What did I say, 15? Did you? Yeah. Yeah, 14.92. The Magellan sailed. <laughs> I was going to say. Columbus, Columbus sailed ocean blue. It wasn't Magellan, it was Columbus. <laughs> I noticed something. Doug did not fall over. Doug didn't fall over, which is a big clue that the dang round did not stop, that it passed right on through. There was no absorption of energy, in other words, right? Yeah. And when we got up here, we found a big giant hole in Kevlar panel number one and right out the back. And I noticed a big giant hole in Doug's personal body armor. And while I was feeling around in there, I thought, 
Let's go ahead and take a look at Doug's bag. Wow. Well, so we don't need to look any further. I, th I, I thought two vests ought to be good, good enough to catch a, a, these things. Nope. Yeah. So, so far it's looking pretty good. Two level three A vests. That's like level six. <laughs> Now I will admit that I thought that two level 3A Kevlar vests would be able to stop this and boy was I wrong. This thing kind of behaved like a rifle round. Just went through these things like they were standing still. I guess they were standing still. Okay, we had a... a Stability problem on that one. Actually, it flew. happens when you're over 40. <laughs> um, yeah, I found this thing. I still can't hold it because it's extremely hot. Well, don't hold it. Put it back in the hole. Put it back. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> so you can see how it kind of landed right there, like that, upside down. It made a perfect upside down imprint and destroyed half of this. I don't know where it all went. No, I'll have to look around, but it looks like it sheared off. Right there at the middle of the X. God dang it, that's hot. But look at that uh, big old hole right there. Yeah, but it did not go through because it hit sideways. But what do you think? Is it worth trying another one? I think it's worth trying another one, yeah. We'll try and get People a, would be screaming if we didn't. We did find the cork round from the Doug. That's from the Doug shooting. Yep. So maybe we should try another cork round. That yep. Last, this one was a rubber round. Yep. Now in this test, we had a pretty anemic spin. In other words, didn't have enough uh, angular momentum to stabilize this projectile. One of the many responsibilities I have is trying to take these never tested exotic projectiles and try to make them function. Normally for something like this, I would use an FS-12 gas seal, but I'm completely out of them and they're sold out everywhere. The next option I had was using an X-12X gas seal. It's a lot shorter, there's no cushion at all, and I wanted to bring up the column height by using a cork wad. And cork is pretty stiff and doesn't provide much of a cushion. So in order to try to replicate the FS-12's cushioning, I tried some of these kind of a soft foam rubber wad system and unfortunately every one of these caused failure. <laughs> there you go. You know that one worked. Did it go through? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, we have there another... Is. That is a BFH right there. <laughs> I mean, we've only seen this, what, three times in TFM history, where a round punches straight through a lead plate this thick. First time. There it is. Made it through, and then here's what's cool. Oh, you found it. Over here, it's stuck in the vest, but look at all the lead plate shards that it brought with it. Wow. I mean, there's a lot of there's lead a, plate in there. a couple ounces of lead. Oh, Lord, that thing's still hot. I'll show this to you sitting on the vest, because it's hot. <laughs> but uh, look at that thing. It's all deformed on the front. Lost a lot of its uh, frontal mass here, digging through that lead plate, but I'll be damned if it didn't make it through. Wow. That is crazy. But this vest was doubled up. It didn't make it through even the first panel, but it brought tons of these lead plate shards with it. Wow. By using just the cork wad instead of that foam wad, it made a huge difference. We now have a very strong spin. The accuracy is good. And because it went in nose first, penetration was much better. Now the purpose of a Sabo is to keep the projectile centered in the barrel. It also prevents any barrel damage or fouling from the projectile. Now the downside of using a Sabo is something we call Sabo slip. It's kind of like clutch slippage on a car. If there's too much slip, the slug will never come up to adequate spin to stabilize in that millisecond it's traveling down the barrel. So I gave these projectiles a wrap with electrical tape. It's a little hokey, but it increases its cohesiveness and also bulks it up to better engage the rifling. Now at this point of the testing, we only had one failure of the foam wad and this kind of verified that the foam wad system was not working out very well. 
I decided to stop the testing for the day and replace all the foam wads with the cork wads since those were working out well. Fortunately in this test, the way the projectile buried itself in the wood, it wasn't damaged at all and we were able to reuse it for another test using the proper cork wads. Now remember we only had nine of these projectiles to start with so we wanted to make sure they all counted. Lexi went through a lot of trouble and expense to get these to us. Well, it went right through that lead plate and two Kevlar vests and uh, had some pretty impressive penetration. So now we're going to try it through this quarter inch stainless steel plate and we're going to try and catch one with the uh, vests. The reason we think it'll be able to be caught with the vest now is because it's going to hopefully dump most of its energy as it plows through this plate. We're thinking it's going to plow through the plate. Let's take a look. Okay, I'm ready when you are. All right. Blue tape? Yep. Oh, I got to relight new sights here. Almost needs to go through. Here we go. Ooh. Stout recoil. <laughs> oh. Well, surprisingly, it did not make it through the quarter inch steel stainless steel plate. Punched a nice little hole in there, and I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that little X shape in there? That's pretty cool. Yeah. It totally left the uh, little marks of the nose of that round in there. And look at that. Wow. Stainless steel nubbin right there. <laughs> but that was a hell of a wallop. Did not make it through. The round bounced off here to the right somewhere. We can't find it in the. Maybe in the maybe our front. viewers can find it. Can you see yeah, it? Yeah. You win 10,000 extra Talflator points if you find that slug for us and identify it. <laughs> Send us the GPS link. Now just like I was wrong about the Kevlar vests being able to stop this thing, well I was wrong about the stainless steel plate. It's really interesting how the projectile came to a dead stop and then the plate spun around and whacked it out to somewhere where we couldn't find it. This is another good example of how inertia works. The plate really didn't start moving until long after the projectile came to a stop. I think these would be a great round for the clay block. Or to fight the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> it's some good artwork there. <laughs> okay, I'm ready when you are. Alright, here we go. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, there goes your clay block. Yeah, clay block is done. It pretty much blew the hell out of that clay block. This is what we had left on the block. We found big giant shards of clay. 20 yards away over there by my truck. It's crazy how much it moved that thing. Um, this little piece of supplemental Kevlar here was balled up like a little uh, like a little catcher's mitt around this. And when we peel this thing back, you can see that that. Oh, look at that! We finally captured one. Buried in there. Still warm. Looks like it's in good condition. Well, I tell you what, it's in just about pristine condition. I think you could probably reload that one or yeah. send it to a Patreon. Yeah. That's pretty, uh, that is pretty cool. Or use it for very big Phillips uh, screws. <laughs> yeah. Now this clay block is, as we saw, definitely undersized for this test. These slugs were just too powerful. What I thought was really interesting though is how it creates a square permanent wound cavity. I was really curious to see if those four flutes actually did anything other than look really cool. And they do. It took us a while, but we found actual frozen Tauntaun shoulders. <laughs> and we brought those out here. Um, they're not very good eating Tauntauns. So we're instead going to shoot one of those penetrator slugs and see if it'll make through two of these. These are frozen. Uh, only the top centimeter has started the thaw out here. And then we hope to catch it in the. Uh, it's kind of like pie crete, but made out of meat. Yeah, it's meat crete. Meat there. Oh, why didn't I think of that? All right, let's go with some uh, chunks of meat and uh, see how that thing plows through here. This would be a good simulation if you're ever thinking about using one of these for hunting. I don't know, pigs or deer. On the ton -ton. That went right through. I think it went through. The way the vest went flying. 
The 12 gauge extreme penetrator had absolutely no problem going through these two chunks of meat which were frozen and that of course makes it a lot tougher to penetrate. In my opinion these would function extremely well for large dangerous game in North America such as the grizzly bear. Heck I think it's even possible you could use these for hunting dangerous game in Africa like Cape Buffalo and these could be loaded even hotter than just 1500 feet per second. What happened this time? Well, Ooh. first of all this meat is smelling pretty bad. <laughs> Sat in the back of my truck for a couple of days before we froze it. Oh no. So you've got a significant meat hole right there. I don't know if you can see up through there, but there's a uh, daylight. It made a oh yeah. Nice hole through the tauntaun. Significant meat hole actually was the, uh, I had a name of a Tejano uh, thrash metal band back in the late 80s, 89 through 91. <laughs> <laughs> we only toured one town and we broke up over creative differences, but significant meat hole. If you guys can find some of the uh, some of the B cuts, uh, you're it's only on on eight track though. Only on eight track, <laughs> and uh, oh good lord, that stuff is starting to stink. <laughs> Woo! So it, it went through both, right? Yeah, went plowed right through both chunks of meat. It, it hardly even moved. Yeah, that thing didn't. Uh, it was slowed down a little bit because it caught our Kevlar panel. It buckled it into a nice little point, which is usually an indicator that we've got the round in there. Threw it way back on the hillside, but we went up there and pulled this thing out. We've been there's, looking for 10 minutes for that thing. There is no brass to be found, so. Well, if only we had a big sheet we could have put back there. Because, yeah. you know, if we had known it was going to do that, we could have put a sheet back there. Well, we've got to start filming on the Bonneville Salt Flats so we can find all of our <laughs> loose rounds laying around. <laughs> or on a on a snowy pasture or a ice, ice rink? skating rink. Yeah. So yeah, we were unable to find the round that was laying out there. We'll find uh, it, you know, we'll, you know, we'll find it next week. It'll come toppling down while we're looking for something else next week. But either way, two giant frozen pork punks. Uh, we'll find it like we found this one today. <laughs> yeah, when you're not looking for it. Yeah. It's like Easter out here. Yep. Shotgun Easter. If you need to bring a bunch of kids out here, I bet they'd find it. <laughs> okay, we're gonna shoot at the biggest primo. The biggest primo. Which, if you speak Spanish, you know that's your biggest cousin. <laughs> Ricardo. Ricardo, your biggest primo. Yikes. Ooh. Yikes. Ooh. We wanted to try one more of the weird foam wads. Yeah, so you brought out one more that had the, the foam wads, which we found out the other day were completely... Well, they were consistently bad. Consistent, right? Yeah, it was just that one little detail that. So all day we've been shooting cork, and those have been growing great. The one foam we have today flies all goofy. However, although tumbling, it happened to hit right on the primo right here, which is where I was aiming. So that was a good sign, you know, accurate still. And uh, blew right out of here, blew the bunghole right out of the bottom of this water jug. Look at that. Man. Thick old shard. I just wrinkled the crap out of this jug, split the back of it on its way out. You see the little exit hole here. And we found our vest in the background. It shattered the wood that was holding it up. However, the vest caught it and we found a nearly perfect round with some Kevlar hairs on it. We found the nearly perfect round buried in the uh, vest. You can see, if you look very closely in the little reflections there, you can see just a little bit of scarring on those machine cuts but you could pretty much just reload this round and get right back to work yeah in this test we had not the best spin in the world but fortunately the projectile hit nose first with just a little bit more tweaking and experimentation i'm sure we can get 100 percent reliability out of these but overall we're doing pretty well some ammo companies spend months and test hundreds of rounds before they get it right. Woo! I see a wound track all the way through it. Yeah. The Extreme Penetrator 12 gauge slug almost didn't even slow down as it passed through this 16 inch block of clear ballistic gel. And just like with the clay block, 
the temporary wound cavity was probably square shaped. The twist rate on Greg's barrel I believe is 1 in 27. So even if we had perfect engagement with the rifling, that projectile is only making about half a rotation traveling through that block of ballistic gel. The slug never tumbled, it went straight through, nose first. So as we walk up to do our bomb damage assessment, we find out that uh, this round was just laying here right on top of these Kevlar panels. It hit low left, which we'll show you in a second <laughs> what it did through the uh, gel. But that warm little brass round with its tape still intact and in virtually perfect condition. That could pretty much be reloaded again. So you got quite a few of these that are in great shape. Yeah. Now we didn't have a mark on this, but I was just kind of aiming generally for the center. So it hit right there. I don't know if you can tell, but you could almost see the shape of those little Phillips, yeah. Phillips screwdriver yeah. notches. They're sharp. Those yeah. are sharp little edges. But take a look at this. This is what's crazy. Can you see it? There? Maybe I'll move it in the sun. Look at that wound cavity. That doesn't help because it's reflecting off the oh. sun. <laughs> I will leave it alone. Yeah, that is. Look at that wound cavity through there. Just gigantic. Just yawed a little bit. Yawed a little bit and then look at this tiny, tiny little exit hole right there. Oh, wow. That was where that big old giant slug it, came it, out. it really didn't slow it down very much. No. Probably would have gone through about three of these. Yeah. Before slow, before you could have captured it. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know if you guys can see that uh, temporary wound damage that as that thing coursed through there, but... Yeah, it, it ballooned out all the way, the entire block cavitated. Yeah, there you go. That is a... <laughs> uh, block the... That's a gnarly wound channel there. Yeah, very impressive. Oh, you're really going high tech there. Well, Mrs. OG and I needed to get rid of an old ice chest. So we filled it with <laughs> Jägermeister. <laughs> and uh, inside... We have an old fleece blanket. Actually, it's a new fleece blanket. It just happens to be so soaked now. So we're going to try the uh, Paul Harrell high-tech bullet stop floating inside of here. See if that penetrator slug can make it through the walls of the ice chest, through 18 inches of water. There, that's like almost 24 inches of water. Oh, yeah. I was told an inch was this long. <laughs> and then uh, we'll catch it in, hopefully catch it in this uh, high-tech wet fleece backstop and then we're, we've got it backed up over here with a couple of Kevlar panels. Okay. So, let's give it a try. This is <laughs> this is best idea ever. Alright, here we go. So now the ice chest. Oh, self-emptying. Oh. So this uh, Velociraptor round made it through the front of the ice chest. Okay. Not surprising there. No. Blast it inside. Look at these holes in this wet flea. Hold it up. Hold it up so you can and spread spread it out. It's cut. Wow. It Hold on. Keep holding it up. Maybe there's more. There's holes all over it. Yeah, it was all folded up. So it went through the high tech wet fleece backstop. Sorry, Paul Harrell. Why do you guys hate Paul Harrell? <laughs> And then, Does he ever reply to you or anything? Oh, Paul, no. Yeah, he never did. Does he? I don't think he replies to anybody. Well, I don't think I've written him. So. Oh, I've I've not, I've, not I've complimented him quite a few times, and it's like he doesn't look at his comments apparently. Not, Unlike us, who you know. Guy. Exactly. I sent him Christmas cards. Nothing. Wow. So. You just sent him like a candle or something. Take okay. A look at the back of this, the round made it through all the water through the high-tech wet fleece backstop, out the other side of the ice chest. And we had two layers of Kevlar here. And when I came over, this brass round was laying right there on top of the Kevlar. Perfect, perfect oh, condition. So we recovered three of them. Well, that concludes the testing of the Russian, extremely Russian penetrators. Extremely penetrator-like penetrators, not copyrighted. <laughs> no trademark infringement here. Pretty impressive round, though. I mean, overall, once you got those things wouldn't it, straight. Wouldn't it be great if Lehigh Defense saw this video and said, hey, we ought to make a 12 gauge right. extreme penetrator slug. Yeah, they make them in the, uh, well, the honey badger round is a, is a Lehigh design. 
Uh, they make them all the way up to big old giant elephant rifle rounds. So why not put it into a 12 gauge now? Yes. We've proven that it works, you know. Um, that would, You have to use a, a full, full rifling though. That's right. Just like Nut and Fancy, he believes he is the industry test and he uh, then demands everybody goes out and makes the stuff he tests. So <laughs> uh, we think they ought to try that in a 12 gauge slug. They would, I think they'd sell well. It's pretty impressive, I'll tell you what. It's the same, did I tell you it's the same velocity? 1,500 feet per second is the same as the 10 millimeter? 10 millimeter I, I nailed that powder load. Yeah. But the uh, the weight of that round, flying at the same speed as a 10 millimeter, that's what's impressive. 540 grains, yeah, right. 550, something like that? Right, versus 165 grain or 180 grain uh, 10 millimeter round. Yeah. Huge, heavy chunk of brass flying at the exact same speed. That's impressive. Yep. And imagine if it will do this to all of this mass down here or any of the targets you've seen today. Imagine that thing pig hunting or deer hunting or whatever you happen to be hunting, uh, Tyrannosaurus rex. And, and we have another set of these to test in the, in the near future with three instead of four. It has three, oh, three fl flutes. flutes. Yeah. Awesome. And three I'm, flutes, that's like one less flute. Yeah, one less flutist. That's less of an orchestra than four <laughs> flutes. All there right. you go. Well, thanks for joining us out here. We hope you guys liked that test. It was actually kind of fun and, and surprising for us. Anytime we're able to test something that surprises us, it's extra interesting. It is. When you think it's going to fail and it... It doesn't. It, that's 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 what I love, you know. So, if you guys comment down below. Let us know what you thought. We're gonna send out these wheels to the best commenter. <laughs> <laughs>